Hey guys, uh, just a quick note before I start this video. Um, I'm going to be talking today about the Kia 4. Several times in this video, I refer to the, the camera that I'm reviewing as the Kia 4A. It's not a 4A, it's just a 4. The Kia 4A is the model without the light meter, which I talk about in part of the video. And for some reason, while I was out in the, the woods hiking, I got them backwards in my head. So anytime you hear me talk about the Kia 4A, I am really referring to the regular Kia 4. Anyway, enjoy the video. Hi guys, um, I'm out at Newell Creek Canyon today, uh, which is a very new hiking park um, here near my house. Um, had a Sunday afternoon off without uh, the family. They're all off doing other things, so I decided I'd go for a hike. I got a uh, key of 4A uh, to test out, and I figured this was a beautiful day. It's not raining for once, and I'd come out here and uh, take some shots and uh, do a little bit of a review of it while I'm out uh, hiking. There's a lot more people out on the trail than I would have expected today. Anyway, I uh, picked this Kiev up at an antique store uh, about two hours from my house. I'd heard that there's a uh, cache of vintage cameras down there, so I ran out to check it out, and sure enough, there was. Um, I picked up this Kiev and a uh, Nikon F1. It was pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Um, if you're not familiar with the Kiev cameras, um, after World War II, Russia took uh, the Contax factory as war reparations, and they hauled it to Kiev, Ukraine, to the Arsenal factory, where originally they had weapons, and they retooled to make cameras. So the Kiev series of cameras are essentially exact copies of the uh, Contax 2 and uh, Contax 3 cameras. This particular one was made in 1960. Ooh, I got to take a look at this, because this is cool. I'll take a picture and I'll be right back. Sorry, you know how us photographers are, always getting uh, distracted by uh, things to take pictures of. Anyway, um, basically the Kia 4 that I've got, 4A, is a copy of a Contax 2 from uh, right after World War II, and they just kept producing them all the way to the 80s. Um, it's got a selenium cell light meter on top, which uh, on this particular model works. Um, I'm not certain if it uh, meters correctly, but it works. Um, I'll show you that real quick. If you look at the top here, it pops open and there's a meter there, there's a gauge on the top. This one has a uh, Jupiter 8M, which is a really nice uh, copy of the Zeiss Sonar. It's an f2 50mm lens. Um, I really like them. If you find one in good shape, they're a really good lens. Apparently there's actually a waterfall in the Old Creek Canyon. Um, I had no idea at all this was back here. This is pretty cool. So the Contex and Kiev rangefinders have one of the longest uh, rangefinder bases of any rangefinder camera, making their uh, focusing super, super accurate. Um, they have a nine centimeter rangefinder base, which is huge compared to the Leica's. They also have this really interesting uh, double focus feature where you can focus by turning the lens uh, like you would on just about any other camera. They have this little knob up here too, uh, which lets you do really fine focusing. Uh, using the knob on there. Unfortunately, when you use that, you tend to get your hands in the way of the rangefinder window, so you have to hold it kind of funky, but it works really well. So one of the downsides to this particular version of the key of rangefinder is actually that light meter that's on top. 
Um, it makes it kind of bulky. It's bigger than a Leica. Um, it actually weighs a little less, but that's all right. Um, you can get this camera in a version that does not have the light meter, which is actually my preference. I prefer that version over the light meter one because the light meter is a selenium cell and oftentimes selenium cells just don't work. Um, you can also get them in a rare black bodied Kiev um, and an even rarer no name Kiev. Now the jury is out a little bit on why the no name Kiev exists. Um, some people think that maybe it was uh, for rebranding by other companies, um, but it has no logo at all and looks exactly like contacts. Um, so I'll let you guys decide why you think that might have been created that way. So just like the contacts, uh, the Kievs have a titanium metal uh, curtain, a uh, shutter curtain, unlike the Leicas, which were uh, cloth, so they're a lot more durable. They also went up to 1 1250th of a second, which was faster than any of the Leicas at the time, which is pretty cool. Another thing that's kind of interesting about the Kiev and Contax cameras is how the rangefinder itself is set up. With the Barnack Leicas, you had a separate viewfinder and a rangefinder window, um, but with the Kievs and the Contax, they were the first one to integrate both into a single window. Like the, unlike the later M's where uh, you had different frame lines for different uh, lens ranges, uh, different lens uh, focal lengths, um, with the contacts you only get for a 50 millimeter. So if you shoot anything other than a 50 millimeter on it, um, you are stuck with 50 millimeter frame lines. So you have to use an external viewfinder. I think I hit the end of the trail. I guess I'm turning around and heading back up. Anyway, um, being stuck with a 50 doesn't really bother me because that's primarily what I shoot. But if you're uh, used to shooting a 35 millimeter or anything longer, uh, you really have to get an external viewfinder for it to be uh, accurate in the window. It's not the end of the world, but um, as far as lenses go, there are a huge amount of lenses, both made by uh, a Kiev in the Arsenal factory in Ukraine. Um, and the Contax uh, lens is fitted as well. But for a little while, uh, Nikon actually cloned the uh, Contax rangefinders as well when they were first starting out with the Nikon S. So there's a lot of really great uh, Nikkor lenses that uh, also fit this camera. So there's uh, quite a large selection if you're uh, one of those people who likes to try a lot of different lenses. Um, the, both the Contax Kiev and the Nikon use two different uh, lens mounts. They have an internal bayonet and an external bayonet, which allows for some different focal lengths, uh, which is kind of a neat feature. Um, not something that Leica did, so it's yet another difference between the two. Another interesting fact about the Kiev's, um, I mentioned earlier they were taken as war reparations from the Contax factory after World War II. Um, the very, very early ones from uh, about 1948, 1949, all the way up through maybe 53 or so, were actually made out of actual Contax parts. In fact, if you take the nameplate off the Kiev and flip it around backwards, you can actually see where it says Contax, and they just uh, filed it off and restamped the Kiev, which is kind of cool. You can find the same thing with the Jupiter lenses, actually, um, where they might say Jupiter 8, or sometimes it'll be a Helios or one of the other uh, lenses made in the Kiev factory, but they were actually made with real Zeiss glass. So they're actually uh, Zeiss sonars and uh, sometimes uh, other, other versions of Zeiss lenses, just in a uh, Russian or uh, Ukrainian built uh, housing. So those uh, early, uh, early Jupiter and Helios lenses are well sought after because of that. Anyway, I'm almost back to the parking lot. I had a good hike. Heart's beating pretty good. A rare shot of me without my hat because it's getting too hot to wear one. So, anyway, guys, if you had any questions um, about this or anything else, feel free to ask me down in the comments. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.